Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single enemy thing. What? Fuck, Gary, you know what mm-hmm. happened? You know what hmm. you fucking did to me? I didn't do anything. You what, fucking what I did? did this to me. You uh. you gave me shit last week about trying to put a little fun on the words, and I got two in my head about how I was going to put some fun on the words, and I forgot the goddamn words. Well, it made it so you, I couldn't mouth along. So we both you, are victims here. You hypercritical motherfucker. That's not, that's not hypercritical. Yeah, that's I That's something know, a but, moron would say. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Hey, Gary, how are we hey. doing today? I <laughs> like kind of cranky. And when I started recording, I wasn't cranky at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. We met the listeners. You missed a whole bit where I tried to pressure Gary for no reason whatsoever to playing the new Rabbids and Mario yeah. game. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, like for no reason other than just the love of the game. You don't like it either. You know, like it's, or you haven't played it. What I, I know you don't want to take a stance, but like the uh, I was like, oh, this is my very reasonable reason for not liking it. That has nothing to do with my aesthetic biases. And you're like, yeah, yeah but what about your aesthetic biases? You got aesthetic biases. I'm you like, got aesthetic. Bi- you don't like those rabbits. I, I paid cash money for that game. <laughs> yeah, I, that's very funny to me. Like, I did, just because enough people fooled me. The trick is Harry not Potter. to listen to recommendations. <laughs> like, oh, no, no, it's actually really good. No, it's... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Carrie, I would contend that the actual trick is to only listen to recommendations from me. Hmm. I know no you won't that do can, that. There's no way that can backfire. Let me... Gary, have I have I ever legitimately recommended something to you? Okay. Okay, continue. I just I was putting myself I was gear okay. shifting into serious mode, like memory mode. Have I ever legitimately recommended something to you and then afterwards you were like, "Man, Will was really talking out of his ass with that one." No. Okay. Here but asterisk. But sure, sure. Love an asterisk. Uh not always little, easy little to but, tell whether you are right. Yeah. Yeah, but not always easy to tell whether you're legitimately recommending something. I use a tone of voice. I, I have a sincere <laughs> tone. Yeah. Well, I got to get the wave spectrum analysis to see if I should buy the game you're talking about. Like, Gary, do I giggle mischievous? If I giggle mischievously after saying it, I'm probably I'm probably doing a bit. Sometimes I think you're just thinking about Dorf. Okay. I'm, I he Gary he gets down on his he puts the <laughs> shoes on his knees, buddy. I know. He's a golfer, but he's not good at it. By the way, Gary, you've got to play Dwarf Fortress. Those things, <laughs> like the the interface. Oh my is god, a is little... it the Castle Doctor and two Dwarf Fortress? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can't just Dwarf scoot around on his knees trying to get wives. Well, I mean uh, they're algorithmically generated dwarfs, uh and uh I don't know, something awful loves it. A lot, a lot of stories end up happening there. A lot of dwarf breeding. Oh, oh my God, Gary. I love it when a story... I, I love Debbie Stories dwarf. written? Stories oh. written? Fuck Mm-mm. off. No, nope. Procedurally generated? generated? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Drake-like. See, I was... You know, Gary, I'm not basic, so I was going with the Jordy uh, one. Oh. One of those... One of those. Uh, you're just pitting people of color against each other now. That... Well, Gary, that's a... Very extremely complicated thing you just said that I don't have the resources to respond to. I know. I was trying to short circuit you. Uh, yeah. Hey, but Johnny Five, he's alive. He he is. Uh, he's uh, if you could call it life. Yeah. Like speaking of like people of color, uh, you know, uh, what's his name in that movie? Oh, the guy who does uh, brownface during it. Yeah, yeah, he's cool doing, with yeah. That. yeah. God, what? Uh, and who now makes like very serious environmentalism environmentalism i i met buried that uh documentaries with leonardo dicaprio that's yeah fascinating another guy with a spotless record for problematic stuff gary there's nothing i like more in the world than when uh leonardo dicaprio breaks up with a woman and twitter gets to have it's fun yeah i i, I do kind of like it uh, i i also like it yeah yeah i i uh I'm, I'm pretty into it it's good even though uh elephant in the room Twitter not going to be as fun anymore. Also, Elephant in the Room. We're recording this on Halloween. Fisher uh, Fisher Stevens is that guy's name. I was uh, really, yes. I had to Google it. I had it's to confusing. Google it. He should have called himself Actor Stevens, and then he would have been fine. Uh, or uh, Person Stevens. Person Stevens who became Actor Stevens, and then Environmentalism Stevens. Mm-hmm. No. I'm, I'm not too hot on the environment these days. I was thinking about that. 
Yeah. I'm okay with it. As long as it stays nice and rainy. Sure. Um, of course, we're talking about a fruity plum today. Gary, this is one of those weeks where I started by saying, hey, can we try to get through these on, a, on the faster side? And then I I am... Yeah, Gary, you're wild and out. Little, there's oh. a little song. Okay. Uh, by a band called Blink-182. Oh, the 182nd Blink, yeah. Uh, except it's not... Fuck, is that lit? Is Worst Enemy lit? Lit, is, that's that. That's lit, my friend. Gary, what's your, fa- what's your second favorite lit song? Ooh. Uh, Kick Some Ass by Stroke Nine. Oh my God, it's so good. I, I the uh, it was a mean joke. That was a joke about lit. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That is accurate. Uh, Gary, <laughs> it's mean and does accurate. Does the does the funny Eve Six Twitter account make you nervous the way it makes me nervous? I don't know how it makes you nervous. Are you asking if it makes I, me nervous at all? Does it make you nervous at all? It may not nervous isn't the right word. It does make me think that maybe Eve Six is good, and that makes well, me no. nervous. Okay. Like maybe their the rest of their songs or like their first album or something was legitimately good because he seems like a funny good guy, uh, and I that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Anytime someone seems like a funny good person on Twitter, I I get like just waiting for him to fall. You know? Mm, yeah. Yeah. One of these days they're gonna do one of their funny little jokes and it's gonna be about uh, I don't know like pro transphobia or something. I don't think that'll actually versus, happen. Yeah, versus Drake. Like one what? of those jokes, like a LeVar Burton versus Drake. Kind of oh, joke. sure. Yeah. I. Oh, yeah. Gary, did I get canceled? You might have gotten. Well, it's going to be up to the oh, audience. Gar- Everyone vote. Gary, I'm, I'm going as canceled for Halloween. <laughs> 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 it's Halloween, but it's coming. The episode's coming out on the first. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's uh, November 1st, a.k.a. Leaf Day. Uh, that's Leaf Day, Gary. That's, that's Leaf Day. That's... It's Samba time for Tombo and Leaf Day for Urine, man. Let's do it. Uh, that's uh-huh. a, a, pre, a pretty deep cut that I'm I not going to explain I, to you. Mm, <laughs> no, you let that be for other that's people. I, that's how I get brain cancer. <laughs> if I don't yeah. understand a joke someone made, that's that's one more neuron I, going, well, I'm sick j- of this. Time to be j- cancer. Joke is a pretty stretch. Pretty big stretch for what I just did. <laughs> You're a pretty um, stretch. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, stretch. Hey, Gary, we're talking about Fruity Plum. Uh, of course we're talking about Fruity Plum. Uh, a familiar. Gary, it's so tempting now that we've established the bit of making the episode too long to make the episode too long. And it's really... I, no. I, it's really were you asking I me to keep were... them on time as a bit? Uh, no. <laughs> no. But here I am. <laughs> Gary, I wish can. I could... <sighs> I just wish that there was a song that expressed how I felt about myself at this exact moment. I know. I know your heart's in a blender. Yeah. Watch us spin round to a beautiful <laughs> oblivion. That's that song is good, I think. I you know what? I I've, I've come around on that song. I agree with you. I didn't yeah. used to think it was good. But now I I'm like that was, that comes on and it's pretty catchy. I think um, I've recounted this story before. Uh but uh I I listened to the 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 podcast Up and Vanished, which I think might be the most morally nebulous podcast ever produced. Ooh, is it a uh, true crime kind of thing? It is true crime. It is li- yeah. The first episode is literally the guy going on to like the FBI's list of unsolved crimes and picking one <laughs> to do his thing about. <laughs> to try to solve it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Seriously. But I, there, that's there probably is an episode... the most morally dubious podcast you listen to. I'd agree. Yeah, I don't listen to it anymore. I got too turned off. But yeah. I did get to the point. There's an episode where uh, one of his suspects, or a real human being, Lord, uh, he uh, goes on their Facebook page and sees a point where they uh, they've posted like poetry, and he get he calls a psychologist to look at it and tell him what he thinks that means. But the poetry, Gary. Is the lyrics to Eve Six's Inside Out? <laughs> what do that's you think amazing. he means when he says he wants to go down to a beautiful oblivion? That's in- well, that's I think fucking- that that you couldn't write something uh, that funny. That's that's great. It's, ama- <laughs> it's the like- it's the fucking most amazing. Oh, but <sighs> yeah, how much like how much more morale- immorality will I suffer for something that funny? <laughs> yeah, uh, the uh, I had when I was. Um, in my first high school band before uh-huh. I could do anything like it, it sucked. And I was the worst person in the band. Sure. Um, 
the uh, there was a guy who wanted to join as a second lead singer, which is weird. Uh, and he <laughs> uh, he passed me all of his were, lyrics, were you, and all of them were, were knockoff Smashing Pumpkins lyrics with like one or two words changed. Okay, so. Despite all my ire, I am now just a mole in a fire. It's real similar. Uh, they had they had a song called "Disarm," which was like the killer of me is the killer of of you. What what am I supposed to do or something? And his lyrics mm-hmm. were like, "the the killer of me is the killer of you. What's a boy supposed or what's a guy supposed to do? <laughs> what's a guy, what's a guy <laughs> supposed to do? So, Gary, uh, were you the lead singer of the the band? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gary, I want you to look back with, with the lens of adulthood and ask yes. yourself, was this guy a friend of your bandmates and that they were trying to subtly swap lead singers in the most so, like Seinfeld way possible? Here's the thing. Uh, I was awful in that band and uh-huh. I did get kicked out of it, but okay. it was after this thing with the, with this guy who was trying to self insert. Nobody in the band liked him. I didn't like him, Okay, but he we were like, you know, we knew each other in study hall that way that sometimes you're friends with people you're not friends with in high school. Uh, and he just kept like pitching this to me and he, and I would tell the other guys in the band, they're like, no. And I was like, yeah, I know. All right, guys, let's practice. (laughs) And then I would just, you know, be awful. And then eventually they kicked me out. Um, that that's that's kind of like uh i was friends with uh a guy with some guys in a band in high school and every now and then i'd be like you know wouldn't it be funny if one of your songs had a tuba on it <laughs> that <laughs> the, sounds like a fucking bit but i did it no i that, asked that, it more than once i think that's cooler than this like it would be cool if one of those songs had a tuba on it yeah they were never real receptive to it is the thing what type of band was it like uh kind of grindy uh mm, metal kind of thing okay. <laughs> well, I, those guys famously tend to be pretty serious no they were they were fun guys i played D with one of well, them one of their things they had a no. i think they had a uh axle grinder or whatever that they would like bring out and uh, like yeah. like grind an anvil <laughs> <laughs> the uh music's so stupid music's like i, I love it here. but it's like the all the pageantry around all this stuff is so dumb Gary, yeah. what, what's your favorite musical instrument that is also... Uh, fuck, that's the next item. Fuck! I thought I had a good segue into the fucking yeah. flute. No, nope. this isn't that one. <laughs> we, You know uh, what we haven't talked about yet? What's that, Gary? How, how your weekend's been, buddy? Hey! It's been <laughs> like really you... good. I have a lot of video game left to play. I know. <laughs> well, you made your fucking bed. Now you sleep oh, in it. Gary. Tell me more about your weekend. <laughs> I no did nuts. an escape room. I know. When I mentioned that you Walk knew the guy who it. did it, he was yeah. weird about it. Uh, the uh, He was weird about it. He was like, I was like, I think we have a mutual friend. Gary Butterfield was like, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I haven't seen Gary in a couple of years. I wrote, on, I wrote happy birthday on his Facebook page. It, that sounds like Pat. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, we, we always say, like, let's grab a beer and then we don't do it. And maybe that's my yeah. fault. And I just forgot. Oh uh, yeah, um, I like Pat. I don't know. Yeah. Like in, in general, well wisher of Pat. Um, yeah, oh, makes great escape rooms. That's yeah, that's phenomenal. Like uh, the uh, I'll I will tell you off air mm-hmm. some dirt. Ooh. Um, the uh, not about Pat. If Pat's listening, not about Pat. <laughs> um, the, I mean, it's not. It's sincerely not. Uh, yeah. It's for my time in the industry. The uh, so we're talking about a familiar fruity plum, but not too uh, familiar. Canceled. Yep. Uh, Treasure Room, Baby Shop, Crane Game, Keymaster. Uh, it is a miniature version of the Boss Plum that does worse damage, but is around all the time. Uh, baby Plum is the boss. Yes. Plum. Yes. There's no adult plum. No, not yet. Not yet. Um, not yet. Uh, you unlock this by getting the uh, defeating Baby Plum 10 times, including mm-hmm. the alternate thing that we're going to talk about. We sure uh, are, Gary. And this sucks. Uh, it doesn't do enough damage. I've had this and it doesn't do enough damage, nor does it stay near enemies enough. Yeah. So. Uh, the wiki does note that if you have baby bender, which gives you your familiar's homing effect, mm-hmm. this gets pretty good. Cause this, this does like a, a shotgun pattern. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I agree. Like the contact damage it does is not enough. Uh, like it's nice that it like homes in on enemies, but it's cute as a button. Uh, oh, it's cute as a plum button. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done nice. our due diligence now. Gary, uh, we have talked about the item. 
Gary, I I hate myself so much right now in this moment that I have created. <laughs> I was about to transition myself. us out. I, I was know, literally but trying to me. fix it, and you're doing it again. <laughs> Gary, I'm trapped in here too. I know. I'm trying to free you. Put on my air mask and I will save you from this fucking plane crash. That's, that's not what you're supposed to do. I know, but in this case, you don't have arms in this metaphor, apparently, because you can't do it yourself. And now who's canceled? Put Oh, I guess that's true. Put on my air mask with your mouth. It'd be hot. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash DuckFeedTV. And ratings, reviews, and Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict. Uh, like this one left on Podcast Addict by a sad, sad boy. In the near future, all of my friends will be moving at least a four-hour drive away from me, and a deep existential fear of being alone will come to swift, brutal fruition, not unlike getting sack-tapped by Sonic the Hedgehog. But hey, <laughs> at least everything to Guppy only kind of helps. No, I am not joking. I am in a state of profound, sorry, profound, nice typo, asshole, sadness <laughs> punctuated by ugly crying with Gary and Will as my soundtrack. Five very real human tears out of five. I'm just saying that if you're going to, like, go this route, you got to make sure there's no fucking typos in there, right? I uh, no. No? No. no I, don't, I don't like uh, spelling. Um, <laughs> good night. Good night. No ghost. <laughs> no ghost. I don't like spelling. I don't. <laughs> Gary, uh, I'm just imagine you in middle school now. I don't yes. like science. I don't like spelling. Math, fuck off. No, I was all fine in middle school where I had to, but now that I don't have to, I'm embracing my freedom. Every literally for the last several weeks, we've just had a bit where Gary talks about why would I care about he, something that was 30 years ago? It's a good point. Like, you know, it has no bearing on me anymore. It was fake. Gary, I'm still doing it. No ghost. <laughs> no ghost. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello and welcome ah! to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers every item, trinket, character boss in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and with me as always is a woodwind you left in the icebox, Will Hughes. Yeah, uh, Gary, uh, I just want to first remark that apparently Halloween has cursed the show. But... <laughs> who's, who's we? Who's the yeah. show in this scenario? <laughs> the Rock? Well, I mean, I, I botched my opening last episode. You uh, had that throat clear that's absolutely going in the show. Uh, oh, yeah. This episode, so. Can I tell I you the, edit, the very edit true. I do edit, but I edit to make us get scared. Or, can I tell you the very true thing that distracted me during that? Please. I bought, uh, I have a little shelf, like, with some action figures on it. Uh-huh. One of them is the character Mondo Gecko from Ninja Turtles. He rides okay. a skateboard. When I woke mm-hmm. up this morning, he had fallen over. And I don't remember putting him back up, but I looked over and he's back up. So I might have like a really scary Indian in the cupboard kind of situation going. Sure. Uh, and that threw me. Or Pocket has developed OCD. Or I did it and I forgot because I did it before I had my coffee. Yeah. You know, Gary, you're get Gary, can you spell Alzheimer's for me? Uh, HL <laughs> is the abbreviation I use. Oh, sure. <laughs> I, and no one else. I certainly that's cannot a... <laughs> spell. You picked a tough one, man. I, uh, that's, that's an old thing with my mom. Is she said, you know, if you can spell Alzheimer's, you, you don't have it. Oh, uh, okay. What if my spell check can spell it? Well, then it's, you know, I guess I'll just do the podcast with your spell check. <laughs> uh, hello. I, I don't want to do a character as Gary's spell check. Uh <laughs> You <laughs> have time for the shit. Fair. What what were you uh what were you gonna say? Uh, Gary, I don't recall, but I do want to say uh that I am I really appreciate you giving us the show a shout out on uh Bonfire Side Chat recently. I was happy to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh you you, like you did you all the good my stuff. Yeah. And I did it. <laughs> the, uh, but you were I mean, again, you were right. I like the yeah. show. There's no reason for me not to want people to listen to it. Hey, I like this show too. Yeah. So I like I this show. Yeah, who doesn't like this show? I like this show. Not us. We don't not, not like a, it. I, 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 me, I like. Yeah. It. I listen. To who I, me? I, I, not like. I listen. 
sometimes. I'm Alfred E. Showman. Enjoy show. We got it. My, uh, you know, my lady, she listens to the show regularly. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I do not. I do not get. All I can figure is uh, that she likes reminiscing about a more fun version of me. I. <laughs> this is probably jealous of uh, our relationship. <laughs> God, Gary, we have such a good relationship. We, I, <laughs> we do. Uh, that's why I said it. I didn't. Giggle. I know, but I can't tell you, you can... tell you the truth because our you relationship giggled. is so good. You giggled. <laughs> I didn't I... fucking giggle. You giggled, giggle puss. Yeah, I got the giggles. Gary's I... got the fucking giggles. This show's cursed. My purple-haired Olivia listens to random shows that I do, but doesn't tell me until like way later. Sure. Like I, I don't find out, and then I'll be talking about something. She's like, oh, "I listen to that show," and I'm like, "Shit, <laughs> no." I love. I've been Orb. repeating myself for like Orb. ten minutes. Yeah, I don't think she's listened to Orb, but you gotta get her to listen to our episode of Orb. I she's never seen the Venture Brothers. I mean, that particular episode of that podcast that is not <laughs> really a necessary really require it. Yeah, the uh, she's seen Family Guy. No, uh, yeah, she, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Yay! I know. I remember what you're doing. Uh, I, I I remember that specific ball kick. <laughs> Um, <laughs> It'd be weird if you didn't. It's a ball. The way it clacked my knackers. Uh, yeah, I, I'll get her started with a coal episode of this show. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Also, we should do more coal episodes sometime. We should totally do uh, Guppy Does Coal and now on VHS. Guppy does Coal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gary, you did a very good introduction, uh, a, a intro joke for this. After Once you were done being. Uh, Haunted the least a person has ever been haunted. <laughs> right, uh, the least haunting object. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, uh... <clears throat> pardon. Got that scratchy throat today. Uh, you gave a great intro to Plum Flute. Referencing oh. the, what, William Carlos... Uh, Catherine, blah, 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 yeah. Poem. The Plums is it in the William Icebox. Carlos Williams? Uh, is it Wendy Williams? I don't know. Uh, but I, yeah, that is the plum poem. Ice box plum poem. Uh, I was referencing that about that I mean, sad little poem about William Carlos um, Williams. There we go. I had it. Uh, about uh, a plum. Gary, I would like to formally apologize uh, on behalf of my previous comments about you not knowing middle school things. That was a very middle school thing to know. It. It. You know. There's a. Uh, you're not wrong though, because usually I don't know. So I think you were just making a safe bet. I can't. Nobody would blame you for playing the odds, Gary. I you know? am uncomfortable with the amount of generosity of spirit you are currently displaying. <laughs> it's not generosity of experience. It's commonly self-aware, uh, nice. self-awareness. So it's just so, me knowing myself. Yep. So of the two plum items, this is the better one, I think. Oh, absolutely. Uh, more interesting in all ways. Uh, okay. So let's talk about how we get this first. We probably yep. talked about this on the Baby Plum episode, but... But who knows uh, how long that's been. First of all, been... uh, treasure room, active item, four rooms, four charges. Now let's yeah, go. Which feels about right. It's it's perfect. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the way you get this generally, I guess it does... So it does pop up in treasure rooms? I forgot. After you've unlocked it. Okay. Or no, no. Uh, no just in, uh, in... Yeah, no. Yeah, it does. Sorry, I yeah. thought I was looking at the little symbol. I thought it was the greed mode symbol. It's not. Yeah, that's the hard mode symbol. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so yeah. So, uh, Baby Plum is the only boss in Isaac that you can uh, deal with. Oh, no, one of two bosses in Isaac. Uh-huh. I, man, fighting. I was yeah. so ready to pounce on that. <laughs> well, Gary, what reminded me to correct it was the sound of blood flowing into your dick. <laughs> it was, uh, it was at the possibility. Turged out. Yeah. The, the the gentle susurration of Gary's uh, tissues engorging. Mm-hmm. Mm. It sounded you know, like this. I, let me put the mic up to it. Yeah. And then uh, now... now it's yeah, fine. that's when you fire the blood back out. Yeah, well, Gary back comes, in my body. Gary... Oh, sure. Oh, blood. do you not... Only that one time after the vasectomy. Yeah. Did, really? No. <laughs> it, is, oh. it is a thing that can happen. Uh, yeah. I was very scared of it, but it didn't happen. Yeah, so far I haven't pissed blood. Knock on cookie. No, yeah, no blood has come out cat. of my dick. Only in. It's great. Gary, you're doing... I'm proud of you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, if you... Uh, while fighting the boss Baby Plum, who is a first and second floor boss, mm-hmm. uh, if you avoid harming Baby Plum for 30 seconds or so, 
Uh, she does a little wave and flies away and leaves behind Plum Flute so you can summon her to fuck up enemies uh, later on. Yeah, it's real cute. And it's because she's so darling. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to kill Baby Plum. Um, it's re- and uh, often Well, unless you already have an active item. That you like better than Plum Flute because Plum Flute's pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I would take this over most of the active items I, I consider to be like boss killing. You know, like yeah. offensive act. Excuse me, offensive active items. Uh, I would take this over them. Yeah, that is a tactical consideration, though, because if you get to Baby Plum, you're like, I don't have an active item. Yeah. Do, uh, I, do I want a is... random boss room item, you know, which could be range or some bullshit, mm-hmm. or a pretty good active item? Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, a flute. It looks like the Poke flute. Um, and when you do it, uh, Baby uh, Plum comes down for about 10 seconds and fights. Well, it looks like a. a, a poke flute that's just railing the ever-loving shit out of baby plum <laughs> plum all the way through baby plum yeah the good kind of railing yeah yeah the, like how mr fantastic can do it like you, you rail and you stay railed like all the way through your body oh, tube oh man gary now i'm thinking about a human centipede but instead it's mr fantastic's dick Ooh, <laughs> going into a well no i okay no so gary so here's not- the issue like a here's beaded necklace made out of the other members of the Fantastic Four. Yeah, but Gary, here's the issue. Okay. If we were going to do that, uh, by default, the dick would have to navigate the... Like, if we, like, because Mr. Fantastic wouldn't want to hurt anybody, right? He's, yeah. a, he's a gentle and generous lover. Probably not, yeah. We're talking about Mr. Fantastic, not the maker, his uh, ultimate universe counterpart, who has become a wider villain. Yes. Uh, the small intestine when stretched out is like ridiculously long. It's like several hundred feet all stretched out. Yeah. It goes around the earth several times. It, well, (laughs) no, uh, but I, I worry that at that level of stretchiness, at the very least, he's going to lose sensitivity. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Having to navigate the entirety of, of multiple people's small intestines to say nothing of Ben Grimm. We don't even know what Ben Grimm's got going on in there. I imagine Ben Grimm just has an inch long shoot that functions as his entire small intestine for one. Yeah. Uh, okay. For two though, I think that this might be kind of nice because maybe Mr. Fantastic is a little bit quick on the trigger and decreasing okay. that sensation means that he won't come as quick. Yeah. He's got because that post nut clarity of having to like navigate your dick out of the entire fantastic four. Uh huh. That would be really miserable. Like you do that oh, when you're horny because a- it'd be really fun, and then afterwards you'd be like, "Fuck!" Be like worse. Yeah. It'd be like cleaning up a thousand fleshlights. Like Gary, just the worst. There's chore. a lot of poetry on this this week of Guppy. I'll say. <laughs> we are poets. We uh, we are poets some- of the fall. Recording on yeah. Halloween. The uh, um, is that a band? Yeah, it's the band from uh, Alan Wake and stuff. It's the remedy. Okay. Band. Oh, okay. No. Uh, Gary, we, we we need to move on, but I will add yeah. is. I'm sure the comics have addressed this. Is yep. Ben Grimm rock all the way through or is he a shell? Uh, I think they have addressed this, uh, but I don't remember because I'm not a big Fantastic Four guy. Yeah. yeah. I know he um, he's had like bar- parts of his plates chipped off for a while. He had to wear a mask because oh. uh, his face got all fucked up, like bits of rock like chipped off it. So presumably that was to protect himself. OK, so, yeah, I got to look know. up in this mask. God. It sounds cool. I would love to dissect Ben Grimm. Um, you, you, me, and Reed Richards. And probably Wolverine. No. Uh, Gary, if people enjoy this show, what should they do? Um, Did we say all this stuff for this? I feel like we said it. it, this. it comes, the boss comes out and is the boss and does good mm-hmm. damage. Yeah, it uh, does uh, very strong contact damage and puts a lot of bullets on the screen, which is what Baby Plum does when you fight her. Yep. Uh, a, a cool thing about this, if you're doing this in greed mode or boss rush where you can use it frequently or you get battery items, mm-hmm. uh, being able to pull this down for every wave will do incredible work for you. It also yeah. uh, belongs to the Beelzebub set since it's technically fly related, uh, which means that it, you can get, you know, get flying from this. It's yeah. very uh, good. Uh, last, uh, ye- yesterday's or the, the previous episodes familiar also uh, qualified under that. Yes. Yeah. So uh, probably the best thing about that item and the worst thing about this one yeah. um if people like the show go to patreon.com slash duck tv and give us some dollars and leave us a rating review on apple podcast or podcast addict please if it's five uh, stars. yeah uh let's see uh oh uh 
Oh, I have to look around. I was I I forgot I wasn't gonna read this one because uh the person pretends to be Dr. Demento and at the end like specifically references the death date of Dr. Demento's wife. Oh, <laughs> Oh no! Which, like, I'm not. We're, you know what? No review. Everyone think about what they did. <laughs> like, you know, uh, points for specificity and research. A uh-huh. thousand negative points for being morbid about a harmless weirdo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess congratulations for finding our line. <laughs> yep, yeah, it has nothing to do with us and everything to do with Doctor Demento's dead fucking wife. No ghost. No ghost. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy. Every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by uh, Oh Holy Night, Big Oh Holy Night, eh, Gary Butterfield. If you tell Doctor Demento about this podcast, you are an arc. Oh, Please absolutely! Don't. No one, no one tell Doctor Demento anything. Doctor Demento no. doesn't need to know stuff at this point. Let let an old person be old. You know. Uh, so, Gary, Gary, can I ask you? I'm going to actually get into the topic immediately. Yes. Do you think? This item, which is Star of Bethlehem. Yep. Do you think they came up with... I, I wonder this about Isaac items sometimes. Is this something where they're like, we should do a Star of Bethlehem item and then came up with a mechanic for it? Or do you think they came up with the mechanic for this, which is really cool? Uh, and then we're like, what would the theming for that be? Yeah, top-down versus uh, bottom-up design. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they probably did the name first. Uh, I, I think that is also the case, yeah. Because it's just a, they they running out of Bible things, you know, uh, and just like this is a big Bible thing to do. And then they came yeah. up with her, and the, the effect is very complicated. I think without the idea of having a guiding star, it'd be weird, mm-hmm. you know, without that prompt. Yeah, to come up with this idea. Uh, I love this item. Oh, it's um, so cool! So this yeah. is a Bethany unlock. This is the ultimate Bethany unlock. This is Delirium. Yeah, Bethany Angel Room. Uh, yeah. So what this um, does is, when you get onto a floor, it spawns a star familiar uh, in the middle of the room that slowly starts mo- moving towards the boss. As in, moving to the door of the room, goes through, passes through it, goes into the next room. This is a persistent thing that is moving through the level while you are doing whatever you're doing. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and it has an aura around it. When you are in the aura, uh, you become a super god. Uh, yeah. It's one of the best stat up so that you can get. Um, a 1.8 you know, damage multiplier, which is very good, but a mm-hmm. 2.5 times fire rate multiplier. Uh, there aren't really things that multiply your fire rate in yeah. this. Like, there are lots of damage multipliers. A 2.5 fire rate multiplier is nuts. Yeah. Um, gives you homing tiers and then also a chance to block shots. So you're yeah. incentivized to stay in this ring uh, that is constantly, you know, taking the shortest path. Like I can go through doors. You have to kill all the enemies before you can go through a door and it's leading you right to the boss. So you have it like, yeah. and then when it gets to the, the boss, cool it just stays. Yeah. When it gets to the boss, it just stays in the middle of the boss's room. How big is the ring on this, Gary? Uh, like three Isaac widths. Three okay. Or, like so three you to four get Isaac close to the middle of the room to, yeah. to, uh, but this is really cool because you can, if you want to stomp the floor, like I go through Isaac floors really slowly and very meticulously. Mm-hmm. Uh, I collect all the stuff usually. Um, if you want to get the most out of this item, you're chasing it. Uh, you get inside this, you use its huge power boost to clear the room really fast, chase it so you get to the boss, and then melt the boss because you have this huge power boost. If something happens yeah. and you lose it or it takes a different way, it'll be there when you get to the boss. Yeah. No, this is a um, tremendously cool yeah. piece of design super super cool design uh changes you know very uh transmorphative like changes the way you play every floor um very powerful like a, a secretly powerful item mm-hmm. you know like it's not a pass it's not like you're getting a uh, sacred heart you know it's not passive like you had to work for it but the power boost is really really huge yeah um 
it's one of the things that repentance does that I don't feel like Isaac did much uh, before is play with the floor as a concept, like play with mm. the direct gameplay of traversing a level. Like you have stuff like soul and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's one of the most cool things that the expansion does is like try to change the way you navigate a level. Yeah, I totally agreed. Like part of the reason why repentance is so cool is because it feels like they're really, really push themselves to see what areas they can explore. Yeah. You know, mechanically and just like, you know, I don't think they fully explored every single dive articula, but there's, you know, they touched on all of them. Uh, Gary, now that we've done our due diligence, can I ask you a yep. question I asked on Twitter a little while ago? Please. Do if someone came up to you and or you found a magic rock or whatever and it told you what percentage of all your life's pain you had experienced so far, Ooh. what would you what number would you be happiest to hear? Oh, fascinating. Um, I missed this on Twitter. Uh, that's yeah. interesting. I would have I would have chewed on that for a little bit. So the obvious answer is 100. But that means you're going to die, probably. It doesn't Probably mean you're going to live for yeah. another 30 years of like, you know, <laughs> yeah. absolute bliss. Um, I mean, I, Ooh, God, that's such a good question. Will I, it, well, Gary, the thing is, I think a lot about pain and mortality <laughs> the, the, um, and magic stones and magic rock. I'm always yeah. thinking Gary ancient stones I, that might uh, confront you with yeah. things that you'll, you'll never actually happen. Um, yeah. I love to invent a rock. People are always inventing a rock rather than going to therapy. Yeah. Um, I probably like 60. 60 feels about right. Doesn't it? Like it's as close as I can get because I love being alive. I don't want to yeah. die. I don't, I don't go in for any, any doomer shit. Uh, I want to be alive. Um, and, uh, but I have experienced a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. I'm not in a hurry to experience more of that. So this yeah. way, it's it feels like it's a balance a little bit in my favor uh, of experience a little bit less pain and still getting a decent chunk of life left. Yeah. Or it means you are going in like a week. You're going to have yep. one heck of a day, bud. I, I'm going to die in a week and I'm going to yeah. have the worst day of my life. Uh, the um, Yeah, uh, that that would really suck. That yeah. part of it. I guess like, you know, there's not a whole lot of information. I think uh, I'm going to do the wise man answer and not pick up the rock. <laughs> okay not not to i mean i, I no, 60 no, is my no. answer if i have to thanks but for playing war games you're uh <laughs> the, the uh, 60 is my real answer uh my my tricky you know cut the knot in half war games answer is just like i don't really want to know that um if i had to know it though 60 would be what i wanted yeah yeah i was just yeah. i just think it's interesting to think about uh our lives as a uh a sum total of like pain. A, yeah an hourglass of pain yeah. That's uh that's coming down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, new I, for Modridge this month, Hourglass, Hourglass of, Pain, of Pain, our new the new EP. Yeah. Welcome to Hourglass of Pain. Uh we got uh since we're on Spotify, um, we got invi- invited to create a special message for our fans for Spotify. Yeah. Uh which is very funny. And I think we're gonna do it. I think we we're, we're gonna dress up real douche and be like, hey, this one goes out to the fans. You know, do like a whole whole thing. Uh-huh. Oh, is, is but, it a video message, thing or are you just dressing up for conceptual? Say what? Uh, is it a video message, or are you going no, oh, yeah, no, to just dress up douchey to get in the headset, the mindset? It's, <laughs> no, it's a video message. Okay. Uh, yeah, we get, so people on Spotify can pull down a little like, hey, yeah. thanks to the fans, uh, which is very funny for like our, this you know. all for the fans. 40 people uh, on I mean, there who listen to us. Guppies on Spotify, I assume. We didn't get that message. Uh, we didn't get uh get the thing, so we could write a thing for the fans. We'll have to take it to Cameo, like we threatened. Oh my God, Gary, we got to get on Cameo. Someone asked me to do a Cameo once, and I I just ignored them. Uh, I think that I was chewing on it. Noted businessman Gary Butterfield. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'll never be. This is why I'll never be Logan Paul. Um, I I just like was looking at uh you know thinking about it a lot. And eventually I was like, yeah, I can't, I don't know what to do. And I just stopped, you know, Gary, Gary, do you think Logan Paul is happier than me? No, no. And I don't consider you to be a happy person. I know you don't, man. Uh, <laughs> That's one of our favorite points of contention. <laughs> Can one truly know themselves? 
Um, <laughs> like, uh, but no, I don't. I don't. He does not strike me as a happy person. He's doing uh, those MMA fights. I, Gary, should we get into MMA? Ooh, Gary, I don't How like this. MMP. Um. Maths, mixed martial podcasting. It, mixed martial podcast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, so uh, you're one marshal and I'm another marshal. I can be marshal yeah. Mathers. Uh huh. And I'll be a marshal. Hey, I'm from, hanging out uh, with Venom and he's really nice. And I liked my coffee with sugar and spice. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the famously grizzled voice of Eminem. Yeah, that's what he sounds like. He yeah. sounds like uh, he sounds Rocky. Like, I'm gonna wrap like you into a- shape. He sounds like a beastie boy laid into chemo. <laughs> chemo. That's my beastie boy backup <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah. uh, R.I.P. to the one that died. Oh, I forgot one of those guys died. Yeah, of um, cancer. That was the joke. Shit. Oh, oh I, I thought you were just... Oh, I forgot. I thought you were predicting the... I thought you'd found a, a stone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, wait, here's my, my question. What if you found a stone that told you how the remaining beastie boys would die? What is the be- oh. What's the number one thing you'd hope for? I, I, uh, nuclear war. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, an extremely localized or general? General. Gary, do you ever okay. think about how if there's a nuclear war, it's going to make your own death really unspecial? No, I have no interest in my death being special. So I, you, you at least want to be mourned. Nobody, nobody mourns the last people to die. Oh, the person who, yeah, they do. Like, have you played no fallouts? The last person, like the one, not the last person to die, but I might be the second to last person to die or third per last person. And then you're getting huge amounts of mourning. That's a good point, like Gary. if you're fully one third of the effective population and you die, the oh, mourning yeah. is through the roof or the glee. Yeah. The but I mean, that, that's the impact is huge. And as Sartre said, that's what you want. I, you know, let people boo at my funeral. Like, it's fine. I just want to have an impact. Sartre, yeah, that's what Sartre said. Uh, Sartre or Camus? No, it's Sartre, I think. I think I'm getting my my existential philosophers correct. It might have been yeah. Camus. Could have so. <laughs> Welcome to could have been Camus. <laughs> could have been, could have been, should have been, would have been Camus. Uh, if people like this show, go on on to the uh, patreon.com slash DougFeedTV. <laughs> Get on there. there. We're just a little guy. What little guy. are you doing? Why, why, why not? Why not? Get your dad's credit card and sign him up. Yeah. Uh, Gary, before we do the, the review, I'm going to do one of my infrequent life plugs. Oh. Uh, reminder that I have a day job. Uh, I write for the AV Club where I'm de facto games editor. Go mm-hmm. uh, go read. I've been writing so fucking much lately. Um, you have you have done a lot of work. Uh, recently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of work with little impact. Uh, well, what's impact in this world? Uh, I don't know. People are reading it. So uh, oh, okay. go. <laughs> yeah. Asked and answered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and read that stuff. Yeah, I've been, I've been enjoying it. Huh. So Thank you, Gary. Thank yeah. You. I'm looking back through your stuff. I think I read all of uh, the things you read this week or you wrote this week uncomfortable for me oh no no i i didn't read the uh the james gunn superhero things because i got in my head about wanting to maybe watch one of them before okay, I like it. there's no spoilers in those i didn't i didn't think there would be i was just like me i want to have my own opinion and then think about you know then yeah. read my friend will's like a discussion it was sure. just yeah it was i wasn't well, like it wasn't a, a big i'm holding off man i was just like looking at other stuff and i was like huh and then moved on yeah so. I, I have you not seen super I've not seen Super. I haven't seen any of those. I, I I knew about Super, but I didn't realize it was James Gunn. Yeah, interesting movie. I don't know if I like it. I saw it at the time. Uh, I did not do a rewatch for this piece, but yeah. interesting movie. Anyway, uh, you want a rating or a review? I certainly do. Uh, how about this one left on uh, Apple Podcasts by Austin A. Paul? Good night. This podcast is a real-time study of two adult men becoming increasingly more sleepy over the course of an hour. Sometimes I listen to them when I'm going to bed in order to get in on some of that sleepiness. Does knowing that people listen to you while going to bed ever weird you guys out? Anyway, I like it when they tell me good night. And that was a five-star review. Uh, to which nice. I'll say our new catchphrase, Wake up! Wake up! You have to wake up! <laughs> you wake up, house on fire. Wake up, house on fire! Wake up, you forgot to pay a bill! I don't think that we get more sleepy on this show. Is he talking about well, Wolf? 
Like, <laughs> I get, I get so tired by the end of a bonfire. <laughs> I get so tired by the end of bonfire as I chat, but I don't get tired in this show. I come out of this with some energy, usually. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Uh, wake up! Uh, hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers every trinket, 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 trinket in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and with me as always is a man you gotta fill up with red juice, Will Hughes. Oh, Gary, hello. Oh. Ah, he- hello, old timer. Hello. No, I'm not old, I'm just hollow. Oh, he- hello, T.S. Eliot's special little buddy. Yeah, I'm. Uh, it's me, T. S. Eliot's weird little guy. Yeah, it's the Hollow Man that he wrote about so often. Oh, I thought that was about the Kevin Bacon film. Oh no, no, he he wasn't a precog. Uh, well, T. S. Eliot. What if time goes backwards? Hmm? I gotta think about that for a minute. Is that based? You're... The that's a big sci-fi like. Hey, you know what, uh, Hollow Man? On the bus, yeah, bye. Yeah, okay. Or you can come back in a minute, but I just got to get... Sure, you want to talk to Real Will, though. Okay, yeah, Yeah, what's the question? The idea that time flows backwards as well as forwards, I understand that as a sci-fi trope. Uh What the fuck is that based on? Like, why why would people make that assumption? In in the specific case we're talking about here, it was because I thought it would be funny if T.S. Eliot's The Hollow Man was yes. based off of the Kevin Bacon, uh, what if you were invisible? <laughs> Wouldn't you rape a lady? Uh, <laughs> now I get it. Man. No, I, yeah. I knew what you were doing. I'm saying the okay. sci-fi trope. Like, where did the sci-fi, like, I trope know, come from? It's, it's not even fun. a sci-fi trope. It's like a weird, like, theory thing where people are like, oh, time time goes backwards. Oh, I, I have no idea what you're talking that. about, so I can't oh. participate. Well, okay. <laughs> oh, well, asked and answered. Yeah, I don't know. It's I was just curious about that because that's uh, for. Oh, you're back. Hey, buddy. Trinket time. Sunday, Monday. Trinket. Days. Tuesday, Wednesday. Trinket. Days. Thursday, Friday. Trinket. Days. Uh, do you have any thoughts for a Treyu or his horse? Oh, um, Atreyu, great band, his horse less so. I don't know. I've never okay. actually listened to Atreyu's music. I'm sure it's good. I For somebody. was not referencing that. Uh, what, were you listen- okay. what were you referencing, Gary? Uh, the never-ending story, because you were talking like the turtle, the 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 misery turtle from the death swamp that kills the horse sure. in never-ending well, story. Hey, folks, future Will here. Uh, just want to acknowledge that while I am incorrect about some things during this sequence, irrelevant things, no one cares. Uh, Gary is absolutely, I went and looked, I went and checked, absolutely, completely fucking wrong that the horse drowns while uh, Atreyu is talking to Morla, the Ancient One. Uh, really talking out of your ass there, Butterfield. Tighten up. Is The tr- the turtle's not in the swamp. The Gamork is what kills the horse. The, the turtle, the horse dies in a swamp it while does. Atreyu is talking to a turtle. I, I, and the turtle's the, no, like, the turtle, what's the, the point? Isn't the turtle with the rock biter? No, 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 no. That's a guy riding God. a snail. Okay, you're right. Uh, These look like such big, strong hands. Yeah, that that's the rock biter. Yeah. And then in the second one, they introduce a baby rock biter. And I think in the mm-hmm. third one, there's a wife, like a rock wife. Yeah, if memory serves, the baby rock biter uh, has his own little tricycle. Yeah, it's, it's, Gary, <laughs> it's, I, it's ridiculously it's silly. Real, yeah, it's a stupid movie. Gary, I want to be clear. I knew you were referencing Atreyu. I just wanted to like do a side reference to the band Atreyu because I know that's a yes. band. And I, I'm desperate to seem like I know music. You uh, succeeded there because uh, I also knew Atreyu was a band. I was like, oh, Will knows about Atreyu. Yeah. Oh. Oh, but your, your lack of knowledge of that ever any story on Did You? Well, no, but I also knew that. I just didn't choose to engage with that part. If you want to talk yeah, about you, like You thought the Gary, turtle was the- not in the swamp. Okay, or is that a but lie maybe to? he's not. Maybe he's not. He is. <laughs> he's okay. next to the swamp. I know that scene. He's next to the... Okay, is he next to the swamp or is he in the swamp, Gary? He's talking to somebody who is in the swamp. He's in the swamp, okay. but he's not underwater. He's not... Okay. He's in... Like, it depends on whether you... Well, nothing's underwater Let's get down to brass swamp. tacks. Like, swamp is not yeah. water. A swamp is swamp. He, he is on a land part of swamp. Okay. Well, okay. 
All I'm asking, Gary, is if it was a magic card, would it be black or blue? Ooh, uh, that would be black. Okay. It'd be black green. It'd be a black green gold card. The uh, cool. the swamp. Oh, is gold hybrid? Yeah. Okay. Context clues. Anyway, what yeah. about the Gamork? I don't remember the Gamork. The Gamork is like the shadow wolf. Oh, I now I remember the Gamork. Yeah. Uh, it works for the nothing. I mean, works for is a complicated <laughs> idea there. He's got so a W-2. Far as, yeah. What? Do you think he's, he's got a, a W-2? W-2? Okay. Yeah. The good unionized Gamorks. Can um, I say the childlike Empress's tax policy is uh horrible. Yeah. It's it's yeah. really brutal. She's not joining the squad. She's Gary, <laughs> if there's one takeaway for today, <laughs> which we we are recording what, a week out from a, an election I have an enormous <laughs> amount of stress kicking around in the back of my head about, is that the yeah. childlike Empress, uh whose name yeah. off the top of my head I can't remember. Uh, is not would not be in the squad. No, 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 no. AOC. Even though the C in AOC could stand for childlike empress, it could. Alexandria Gary, childlike, empress childlike empress. Is... <laughs> <laughs> like... Gary, stop making up attack ads. <laughs> like her never-ending taxes. <laughs> uh, be, like... <laughs> be a real weird. Maybe for some people have a. F- a luck dragon to fly them to their jobs, <laughs> yeah. but I need my pickup truck. Democrat birds want to grant you wishes, but there's a cost. That's right. These we moved into Never Ending like- Story too. <laughs> I know, man. We got to stay away from that one. It's not a good movie. He wishes for he he burns memories wishing for spray paint. Yeah, <laughs> what a, a thing a at the idiot. store. <laughs> yeah, like, what a fucking idiot. He deserved to have his memories eaten. He did. Like, like what a little shit. A stupid motherfucker. Um Yeah. Uh, of course we're talking about Hollow Heart. Absolutely, Gary. Uh this is good. Uh yeah. Nothing wrong uh, with this. Simple sim- simple and good. Uh at the start of every floor, you are given a bone heart. Yep. Uh it's empty, so you have to fill it up. It's it you know, so it's it's fleeting. If you get hit once, it's gone. But if you can find some hearts, you got a bone heart going. Yeah, we've uh, talked about bone hearts before. They are good. Yeah, and getting one per per state. This is very appropriate for a trinket. Um, really good to have something in the beginning of a floor that will stop you from losing your deal with the devil in one hit. Uh, like yeah, guaranteed. Uh, you get this one by beating Mother as Tainted Forgotten, uh, which I have not spent a lot of time with that character. I'm sure it's wonderful. Uh, one of my favorite Tainted characters. I have not beaten Mother with Tainted Forgotten uh, because Tainted Forgotten's gimmick uh, makes the Mother fight pretty fucking tricky. <laughs> Um, yeah i mean so, mother in general is a hard fight it yeah uh very hard with um yeah oh no 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 i have beaten um i was thinking of the beast oh uh, okay, i have not okay. beaten the beast with tainted forgotten because tainted forgotten is a, a projectile character like you throw uh and uh-huh. then you have to go pick up your thing which makes that side scrolling bit hard yes um no i ha- i did but i haven't seen this yet because i just did it um now yeah, working on my tainted forgotten unlocks Gary, I'm so excited for you to get this uh, good but not interesting trinket. <laughs> I can't wait for it to spice up and have a point zero 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 one percent chance of showing up. Gary, favorite uh, spice? Oh, favorite spice. Uh, can is garlic powder considered a spice? I it's a little basic. I'll say uh, it's a little basic. That's it's just salt. That's just salt with an herb attached to it. That's garlic salt. Uh, garlic powder is granulated garlic. It's like freeze dried garlic that's been crushed up and. So you agree that it's just an herb? Well, no, because garlic's not an herb. Garlic's the not an herb. Uh, garlic's not an herb. It's like an aluum. It's a, it's a vegetable. Okay, but that, that's still not a spice. Well, that's why I was asking if it counted. Okay. You could just say and, no. And when I <laughs> when I said no. You got shirty you, with me, and you now you're say big no. Man you it. said it's kind of basic. Okay, well, <laughs> you, you didn't say no at all. You you <laughs> said something that explicitly implied yes, but I don't like your answer. Okay, well then let's, pre- <laughs> Gary. Uh, point of order. Okay, uh, can we insert into the record that I said no? <laughs> Do you want to? Well, you're editing. Sure. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, but I'm also lazy. <laughs> like. Uh, you can. 
Um, so Gary, if I did not accept your garlic salt, uh, yep. what is my next thing answer? Said intentionally to be annoying. Uh, yes. What what's your what's your real choice? <sighs> This is going to be an, uh, so I'm not going by commonly used, right? Because that would be garlic powder or salt or pepper or something. I uh, mean, I'm, Gary, if you want to say salt and well, everything tastes bad response, without salt. Well, Gary, <laughs> like, are you? But it's it's also a rock, so I don't know what kind of bullshit judo you're going to pull on me. <laughs> say it. So. I'm just saying, salt is the pumpkin spice latte of spices. It's it's pretty basic, but it's also delicious. Um, exactly I mean, like, gonna, a, like I, a pumpkin spice latte I'm going to say cinnamon undeniably a spice uh, more versatile than you think undeniably uh, a spice undeniably a spice just try to deny okay. it I'm, I'm, uh, well Gary Gary, I'll tell you if I'm quiet for a minute that's what's happening <laughs> the, uh, how can I, put, I argue <laughs> with an illusion of good faith that cinnamon is not a spice I don't think that there's an argument for it. It's hard. I'm Gary. It's a tough one. It is but a I have tough a lot one. of faith in myself. It's a creative writing prompt. <laughs> like, yeah, how is cinnamon not a spice? Hey, sophomores, can you figure out how <laughs> cinnamon is not a spice? <laughs> they, they literally moved it on the spice road. Um, <laughs> hmm. um, it's actually just a tree? If If being a plant... Is grounds for not being a spice. I got bad news for you. Uh, <laughs> Only rocks is spice. Oh, then salt. Yeah. Okay. Fucking basic. <laughs> the, the, um, the cinnamon's great, man. You throw some cinnamon in a savory dish. Like I like to put a little cinnamon in chili. It's wow. Okay. Yeah. Or like tacos. Wow. Do you have any other big takes? Tacos. Like taco meat, put a little cinnamon in there. It's quite good. No, just Gary, just general colon. Other, what, what are your other food? Cinnamon and chili. S- some food hacks. Wow. Yeah. What are your other food hacks, bud? Uh, if you ever need a cheap pantry meal, uh-huh. uh huh. Black beans, sweet potato, and spinach. It's great. A little cinnamon. A little cinnamon in there. Cinnamon. Quite tasty. And my special friend, salt. Sometimes, Gary, what I do is if I'm having like a, a burrito or something, I put a little sour cream in it. Oh, me too. That's quite yeah. good, but not a spice. Food, food hacks. Sour cream's a spice. <laughs> the, not a sauce? How would it be a sauce? It's not liquid. Great. Well, it's not not liquid. It's a wet spice. Wet spice. You have a dry oh, rub and a wet spice. Dry, I guess if there's a dry rub, you convince me. Uh, that, no, what? No, 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 <laughs> why? Through the existence of dry rub, it suggests, it's like matter and antimatter. It suggests a wet spice. No, this is, now we're at the part of the wish. I've picked up the magic rock that makes my wishes come true, but in like uh, shitty Rod Serling ways. This is a good way for it to come true. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's not so bad. We all agree on sour cream. We all agree um, that sour cream is a wet spice. And everybody who does, who's part of the Guppy Army, we're going to call you the Cream Teens. And Cream Teens, come together <laughs> and join us Why on the Cream Teens Street Team. Why are they teens? Why couldn't it just be the Cream Team? Uh, because they're a part of the Street Team. The Cream the cream Teen Street Team. If I if I made them the Cream Team, then, then I'd be using the word team twice. God, some like forty-year-old weirdo in Australia is now just like I'm a cream team. <laughs> yeah, he's he's one of you know one of you, one of your best buds, uh, and uh, he's he has a cream team. You know, um, Ooh, Gary. good. Week. We're the only adults. A, we're the only. Uh, mm. We're we're the Cinnaboys adults. C- Cinnaboys, <laughs> the Cinnaboys and the cream teens. Yeah, delicious taco filling no boys. <laughs> I don't think I like it. I don't like. T- you want to be a t- delicious taco filling boy? No, Gary. What I'm thinking about right now is cream cheese with cinnamon on top of it. Ooh, that'd be great. Would it be? I think it might. Yeah, yeah it'd be really good, man. You Wait, know no, what? I'm I gonna blow your mind. Cheese. I meant, I meant sour cream. Oh, okay. In that case, not as good. Yeah, cream no, cheese though. Okay. Check this out: cream cheese with cinnamon, and you think, oh, it's gonna be on a bagel. What about on a pop tart? Eh? And you're the adult in this conversation. Yes, you're. You are a teen. Okay. 
you're, you're been conscripted you're the into the cream teens. <laughs> you're the Gary. Uh, another thing I'm an I want adult, to... but I'm a divorced dad. I'm a divorced man, so yeah. I have to come up with a quick dinner for my kids that doesn't require talent or money. Thus, this just cinnamon cream cheese <laughs> pop tart sandwich. Yeah, uh, delicious, high in calorie. Keep you play all. You don't get to play in all day. I'm playing you know, all great. day. Yeah, like uh, it's it's dense, calorically dense. Uh, and it comes in fun sugar flavors and like fruit stuff. It's true. Yeah. You know? Gary, I, I gotta I gotta wrap this episode up. The cats are making noises downstairs. <laughs> and also I'm getting sadder by the fucking set. <laughs> the the like, hey man, I'll talk about food with you all day. Uh, sure. you go to uh, <laughs> at, to, at some point we will. <laughs> yeah. We'll stop talking about your your creepy. Hey, if you're concerned, tarts. if you're concerned spicing up some of the stuff you eat off your body with cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, like just a salt shaker on your belt for body body snacks or, uh, or like what i could do is i could pickle my toenails uh the, like marinate hey. them in, pi- in pickling brine and then kind of yeah. just like because i already like chew and suck on them yeah pickle gum they make pickle gum right uh they, they don't i think that you got a, a hole in the market oh my god pickle gum would be good they make pickle almost everything so i would not be surprised yeah. um Go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv and then uh, rate your use on Apple Podcast or Podcast Addict. Uh, like this one left on Podcast Addict. Oh, no, Apple Podcast. I apologize. Uh, from Viria, title, I can't believe Will forced me to get an iPhone just to do this review. Gary, you should listen to Diarrhea Planet. They're a great garage rock, rock band I think you'll like. The song Platinum Girls is a good starting point. Fun fact, they played their final show together at the Nashville's Ryman Auditorium, original home of the Grand Old Opry. And we're joined on stage for their final song by modern country legends Jason Isbell and Sturgill Simpson. This is a real thing that happened and not a bit. Sturgill? 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 Uh, anyways, mm. keep up the good work entertaining everyone with the emotional violence game of chicken you two play every episode. Love V! Oh, thanks, And that me. was, yeah, that was a review from the uh, almost personalityless uh, protagonist of Cyberpunk 2077. Nice. I thought you were going to say uh, the guy who in Diarrhea Planet, and that would make me feel really bad. Oh. Because I can't remember what I said about them other than I think the name is too bad to listen to. I think I would literally like that's what I you said. I think yeah. that is that, that was the whole genesis of this review, was you uh, expressing an aesthetic uh, feeling and other people feeling the need to respond to it. Yeah. You Welcome know, to my life, life, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the Garyverse. <laughs> into the, the Garyverse. Oh, uh, into... The Gary verse. You've all become I'm a Gary. Re- I'm really thinking about the, entering the, the Gary verse, the hit animated film into the <clears throat> Gary verse with all the different Garys coming together. Can you imagine me jumping off that building to just like a cool hip hop song and just splattering to my death <laughs> like immediately? Uh, that would be that would be pretty funny. That is one. Of, that is literally my favorite scene in a superhero film. But it uh, would be. But if it was me and it ended with me dying, it would also be very funny. Still be would my that favorite, be now yeah. be your favorite? Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, <laughs> then that would be your second favorite. And then I wouldn't want you to. I wouldn't want you to just leave a stain. I wouldn't want to have to find. No, you don't want to like sweep up guts. I, I don't know, want to just... see a dead Gary. Yeah, and if he, my blood stain, you can grab my souls. Yeah, and love Gary. Up. I want to be very. I, I, this is going to be the kindest thing I say to you all week. Okay. I don't want to see your corpse. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Outside I, I don't want to see yours either. Hey, the, uh, Put a little cinnamon on that. K- cut Gary Kitchen. You motherfucker talking about putting cinnamon in chili like you're saying anything. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> you can be mad about That's it. That's literally Some don't Cincinnati do it. style chili. Some people don't do it. I put a little chocolate in there. Whoa. <laughs> I've done that as well. Everyone does that. No, everyone does it. I think you're greatly overestimating how people here. You know what we have that like. I know this episode's running long. We have a perfect control group for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cole Ross has. I love Cole. <laughs> yeah. He has a pretty safe palate, like okay. a pretty conservative palate. <laughs> you're saying such mean things in such nice ways right now. I'm going to ask him if he puts uh, cinnamon in his chili, and I would bet you money the answer is no. He busy. represents his, can, his daily can of SpaghettiOs, like, apparently. It is the, no, he makes chili once a month. Every once in a while I hop on, on <laughs> recording, I'm like, how's it going, Cole? And he's like, it's chili day. And I know exactly what that means because of 10 years of hearing about it. 
And I, I bet you there's no, I bet you there's no uh, there's no extra ingredients at all. Like you're nothing to spice that shit up. Your low key rage at chili days. <laughs> <laughs> Just ten years of being worn down by hearing about it, milk toast chili. Everybody who's listening to this, be cool, so we can find out. <laughs> if cool, if you tag cool. him or you or you you know break containment, then I'll never know because when I ask him, he'll be like, "Yeah, I put like he'll probably say that he I puts put fun stuff in there." Cumin in there. I think there's probably cumin and chili powder and garlic powder and onion powder. Okay. That is my guess. I put sardines in mine. Oh, interesting. I, uh, I get uh, freaked up. Yeah. No, no, it's good. It adds, it adds a little bit of kick of umami to it. That's I, I understand that uh, intellectually, but I get grossed out by sardines. Yeah. So, um, no ghost, no ghost. Wake up.